letter when you need powder or powder or pitter, anything with the letter P that you need, Powder Powder can get you. Hello and welcome to the stream. Okay, today we're going to continue, uh, this time we're going to continue what we were doing last time, which has nothing to do with what's on this page that says what we're supposed to do, and that is to uh, briefly figure out how to load and save things in Wolfram Cloud so we don't have to uh, recut and paste, uh, you know, libraries and other um, other functions each time. After we do that, we're going to look at uh, the possibility of extending the uh, what was what we were calling the convert function uh, into something else, into giving it so we have more, um, so we can have uh, we can give it multiple equations and get out some basic uh, formulas from that, and then potentially um, see if we can get you know convert those formulas to more complicated formulas by com combination by chaining formulas together and by using formula unioning, which is a word I just made up that doesn't mean anything. Uh, but first, I believe there is a format called the MX format, which doesn't exist here, but might exist in one of these. Um, BC silly constants, okay. Um, oh yeah, these are some constants I decided to answer, uh, to add to the uh, list of constants that I was doing in a more uh, serious context. Um, and um, so this is not very useful. Um, I'm trying to find where I have something that refers to the MX format where, there we go, dump. Dump save and dump get. So in theory, we can take a mathematical session, a Mathematica session as it were. Uh, not this one though. Uh, okay, let's do that. It's a big number. Not that big, but I mean, maybe too big for what I was trying to do which was create a very simple, um, yeah. Now nope, we're going to go to 70 factorial, which is the smallest factorial that is bigger than 10 to 100th, and therefore old-fashioned calculators can't print it. Alternatively, I'll just have my cursor freeze. Let's try it this way. All right. Now if I'm doing this right, I should be able to say dump save and then I should try to remember the format for dump save. Um, so it's dump saves um, file name comma, th well let's see. I think you can dump save, oh you can't quite do that. I don't know if you can dump save everything. Let's, let's find out. I think you can only dump save a given variable. Context um, but for right now, let's just try to dump save x. I mean, that's not going to be a, a huge deal. And let's see if that succeeds. Okay, awesome. Now, the question is, did that actually show up in our, um, in our cloud files? And clearly, Okay. Is it in the base? Oh dear. User explorations? Yeah. So, tempted to do like the directory command here, but let's go ahead and see if we can do a dump load of test.mx. Well, what's the whoa, 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 what's the order of dump load? Is it dump get? There it is. Let's see if this works. Now this file would not be expected to give give you anything, so not bad. No idea where the hell the file is being stored, but apparently we can dump stuff to it, and and um, oh, this is just weird. Okay. Still worries me that we can't actually see where these files are going. That is a um, so you can go to the go to home. None of these are MX files. Copied files. Yep, not there. All right. So what I'm tempted to do now is the directory function to see if we can get the list of 
this is this is if this works I'll be surprised oh okay um so this is the directory we're in apparently um all right let's see let's see if we want some files now we can file list here gives the current working directory um so file names I guess Okay. I'm, I'm on the verge of getting into their Unix business. Okay. There it is, test.mx. Um, okay, so we're getting closer. We can save a mx file. Well, the question is, can we save a um, can we export data? So what does x equal to right now? Good. Can we do this? That's probably not an MX file image. I probably meant to do M there. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh -huh. Duplicate, print, file info, revert to backup. Okay, can I do... I don't want a new notebook. I just want a new sort of blank file. Format. New, insert. New, evaluation. View. None of those. Okay. There might be a way to... Okay. Well, this is a notebook. At least we're getting somewhere now. Um, so can I do this? I don't think I can. Yeah, I, I think, I don't know if I can. Oh, can I do dump context? Actually, there, there should be something in context. Let's see if we can find it. Cell so context, get context. Uh, context by itself. That's what that does. All right, let's see what, what dump functions we have. Dump get, dump save. Um, dump get, dump get can get a file, so that's kind of nice. Um, now, what does this do? Let's see. Okay. Okay, that's nice. So the only problem here seems to be I cannot create a text file or, you know, that is that is Mathematica script. At least it doesn't seem like I can. I can't upload it because it won't let me. And I don't think I can create a text file here. No, can I? Cloud files. Upload? No, you can't do that. Uh, recent home favorites, blah, 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 copied files. I actually probably want to be one level higher than this home. What does this do? Create new notebook. <sighs> Create new text. This is exciting. Um, well, the current file sucks. Okay, so this is just plain old text. I think I found my thrill on Blueberry Hill. I found my thrill on Blueberry Hill. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this goes over here. Okay. Now if I'm doing this correctly, I should be able to, like, uh, twick, twick it in. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is not going to work because this functionality is now in the basic Wolfram. So now I can do file save as. Oh, let me, oh, let's, let's see if we can, yeah. 
file will be saved to okay. So I'm gonna call it bclib.m save. Okay. Is it an autosave? Okay, so now can I do bclib.m Okay, I can't set the time zone. I don't think I care too much about that. And now can I do... Yeah! Hubba hubba, baby! Okay, so now I just need to do one for... Um, okay. Let's do a staging one. And the only reason I want to do this is because... Um, the functions I'm adding for the, the, the dependencies graph stuff that we're doing, I probably don't mean dependencies graph, I probably mean uh, functions or relations. And that is this crap here. And, and we actually are going to add one to this, but for right now this should be fine. Alrighty. So even though I can't upload files, I can do the next best thing, which is uh, basically create text files. So that is really um, cloud files. Hey, come back here. So now it's decided it's going to be nice. Um, yeah, this is OK. I think we can get rid of I don't have Wolfram Desktop. So if I do a new, new notebook, which I'm, I'm not even going to use, but just because so I can get to cloud files, um, there's BC Libm. I love it. We're going to create another text file. Uh, for the current file, um, discard, because it's empty. OK, and so this would be BC Libm staging. Sorry, BC Lib staging.m. Now we're cooking with gas. Um, bclibstaging.m Yes. And now we should be able to do this, this, and at some point we should probably put semicolons here because we don't want any output from these suckers. And now we can go over here and start doing stuff like, um, you know, do some examples here. Uh, define, convert. Um, I think we had the one that we wanted for um, this thing here. Um, define, convert. I think this is correct. And I also think something terrible is going to happen here. Um, I think we might get a timeout here. And let's see what's going on here. Yep, I think this is one we couldn't do. We could do it. Oh, actually, this is also not the one we want to do because we want to do a really simple one. Um, Define convert. Um, yeah, yeah. We just want to do define convert of these things. Uh, although there are three of them, so we have to be a little bit careful. And then we're going to create one for uh, that does multiple equations. Uh, and then and then we're going to do the the real work. <laughs> then we then we get started. That's not what I meant. I meant to do this. And this one, we should get some very nice, easy looking. Um, I need to learn how to spell the word convert. OK, good deal. This is what we expected. So now, going back to the staging, I'm going to change this up a little bit. So this is not really defined convert. 
but um, what this actually does is it only works for one solution. I mean, even if there's multiple solutions in that one solution. Um, define, okay, so what does this do? Uh, okay, so this is functions for one solution. Oh, this does it for multiple. Um, this so this actually has one expression to um, function. Good, 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 good. And now we need expressions to function. Which almost uh, let's call it, well let's call it exps, which is a list of expressions. And it's going to be, this is not objective C mode, it's text mode. Uh, expression to functions will map one expression to function um, over each element. But there's one more step that this does that the other one doesn't. So we do this, we map one expression to function as a function over x, and then we flatten by one level, so we don't have, so we have these look, th they look indivi like individual like. I don't know what the word individual like means, but that's what they're going to look like. Um, so we basically will get individual expressions. You know, we'll get. Uh, I don't know what we'll get. I don't know. Can I open this file from here? Nope. Um, okay. That's what I'm talking about. And just because I made some changes here, I can just do this. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da. Da -da. How do I save? Is it just automatically that I get a save? Control S. No, that's going to save it to here. So I'm going to pretend like that just did an automatic save. And then define convert will no longer be defined. I mean, it still might be by accident. And then we can say expressions to functions and then we could give multiple uh, expressions like we did over here. Uh, these suckers here. In fact, why don't I just do this, this, this. Sorry, V, because this is. So there's a list of expressions, three of them. And expressions to function should give me an output list of six elements. Um, And let's go ahead and define this so we have, uh, so we can do things like length temp 1759. Make sure this is really six different expressions. And then we'll look at each of the individual numbers uh, individually. All right. Uh, we're going to have to ignore the set time zone crap. Okay. So this tells me I can go from ET to Unix. This tells me I can go from probably Unix to ET. This tells me it can go from MJD to Unix. The second one almost for sure will tell me I can go from Unix to MJD. Right. Um, and it is Pomodoro time. We're going to skip it because this is the first Pomodoro. But we will go on the next ones. This one will JD to MJD. And of course, this one will tell me MJD to J JD. Okay. So what's exciting about this is we can now create like a mini graph out of um, out of the results. Um, okay. Let's see how we do this. So it's going to be basically I1 goes to the list containing I2, where I is a number of temp 1759. Uh, let's see what that looks like. That actually doesn't look bad. 
can we graphify that? I mean, those are edges, so I think we can maybe even make a graph right here now. Ooh, okay. Not quite as exciting as I thought it would be, but let's see. Um, vertex labels. Automatic. Okay. So Unix can go to ET and MJD. ET. So this is... Um, okay. So we can go from ET to Unix to MGD, MGJD, to Julian date, do all of these things, but there's no direct formula right now to get from ET to MJD. Uh, even though there is a, there's a path, there's no direct formula. And that's the kind of thing we want to try to find now are those formulas. Um, so, so the question is, now that we have this graph, we can do a lot of things with graphs. Um, and I guess the question I'm going to have here is, uh, even though we can go from ET, ephemeris time, to Unix, Tem JD, modified Julian date, uh, how do we exactly do that? It's, it's going to be a composition of functions. Um, and that, that, is, that is kind of ugly. Let's see. Um, And there's more to this, because we can go from Unix to ET and Unix to MJD. We can go from Unix to ET comma MJD. Uh, that's another thing we need to know there. Lots of stuff going on here. Um, so this is, this is pretty ugly. Although not as ugly as the stuff we did last time, where we actually basically got this stuff working. Okay. JD, MJD to Unix, to ET, so we can, get, we can get between any of these two. So now I want to see, let's call this G1803. I want to see the transitive closure, transitive closure graph of G1803, which I think is going to be the complete graph on four elements. Yeah, it is. Um, I don't know if that's actually that useful, though. Um, looks cool. And this basically says what you think it says, which is you can get from any one of those to any others, just based on the relations we already have. It doesn't tell you how to do it, though. So, so one thing we need to do is we need to figure out, well, we need a lot of things to do here. Um, graphs in Wolfram Alpha are in Wolfram are quite uh, powerful. I don't know how powerful because I don't know what I'm doing, but let's let's just take a look at the graph here. Once you have a graph, you can do several things like Hamiltonian path. None of which that's none of that's really useful, but uh, graph, 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 graph. Um, adjacency graph, instant graph data, scope options. Okay, come on. Graphs and networks. Uh, complete graph, random graph, visualization. Highlight graph, graph distance, vertex degree, computations on graphs. Okay. Yeah. So find shortest path uh, in a graph would be. Okay. So now. As actually, yeah, let's go ahead and leave that. Find closest. Ooh. Is it graph find closest path that they change this? Okay, this is not cool because find shortest path. Find shortest path. Um, in G1803 from ET to JD. ET, Unix, MJD, JD. Okay. Now, to get from ET to Unix, yeah, we're going to need a little bit more than that, because expressions to functions, 
this works, but it doesn't create any. Um, it doesn't create anything to hold these uh, these uh, conversions. Um, so what we want to do with temp, so we need to go back a step here. We need to look at temp 1759, and uh, this will be this will be just a hideous list of things. Well, it's not that hideous. Uh, and then what we need to do here is we need to. Um, I think we did this last time too. We basically need to map. Then we'll call it convert because that's the only name I have in mind right now. But um, and this is ugly because it actually assigns things which you really shouldn't be doing. So I think we said it was going to be convert the first element, comma the second element. Um, is a function which applied to the third element gives the fourth element, where i is a number of temp 1759. And the ugliness here is we're actually defining a function. It's not a, it's not a saw, it's hard coded as, as convert. Um, if that worked, we should be able to do a question convert. Um, Okay, so what did I do wrong here? I said I1, I2, close I3. This needs a thingy there. Convert. And we've now defined convert for, yeah, that's not bad actually. One thing we probably want to do is add some simplifies in here. Um, I'm trying to figure out, I think the only possible place we can put simplify is over here. And it might not work because of the way we're doing this, but let's find out. Okay. Well, that's a little bit simpler actually, but I mean, this really should multiply out. Okay, I probably don't care right now. So anyway, what we have now is a new function uh, expressions to function, and then we can do a define convert. Um, and that would actually go ahead and do our definition there. Uh, and then we could look at the, uh, the graph of uh, expressions to functions. And I guess we could write a function that spits out the graph too. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Now the question is, can we return a function as a raw object? In other words, have this be a function that just, an unnamed function that just happens to have these properties. And I'm sure we can, and I'm trying to figure out how. Um, and one way we could do it is we could put this in a module and have the function name itself be private to the module but have it spit out eventually. Um, let's try that. So this would be expressions. Oh, hang on. Expressions to meta function, which is what this is end up is going to end up being. No, oh, okay. Let's see. Of I guess it's going to be a list of expressions. So it's going to be exps. Is that equal to module f? Um, and it's going to be this table basically, except it's going to be on table f of. Okay. And I should probably spell expressions correctly. Expressions to meta function. Convert. Oh, no, no. So this is the F. I don't know if this is going to work. This. I don't know if you can re return things you've created temporarily in a module. We probably don't care for the simplify. I think we'll just leave it as I four. Okay. So we have a table here that we're defining um, F on, and I is going to go through. the expression, oh wait, expressions to function 
of um, exps. There, there. This will close off the module, but we don't want that. We want now to return f, and I don't know if it's going to let me do that. And that's the end of the module there. Okay. So now, if this works, I have I have grave doubts about this. And why don't we just call these ekens e e equations? Um, technically, they're not. Well, I guess they are sort of equations. They're actually expressions that that are effectively equations. But anyway. Okay, let's see what this does. It'll crash and burn. Okay. That's probably okay, though. Um, let's see if I can assign that whole thing to a function. Um, and then ask what that function is. I think I can do that. I think it'll allow me to do that. Oh, no, it will not. Okay. So the only thing I can think of is we could send in an expression. This is very, very C-like. Um, uh, but this would be nice if we want to send in the same function more than once. So let's see if we can do this. Send in a function, and I'll define that. I'll define that function for you. So this will say like expressions to meta function. Set h because I want to make sure that we're getting some. So this is ugly. This sets some things in the global space, but let's see. Yeah, there it is. That is fucking gorgeous. Okay. And let's go ahead and get that into, B before I forget, let's get that into BC lib staging. Um, and maybe we'll put some comments in it. Maybe we'll actually explain what this does. Nah, maybe we won't. Oh yeah, the only reason we need to be a little bit concerned about this one is because it takes, um, converts expressions to a meta function uh, and sets provided f to that meta function. This is one of the few times we're actually altering the input variable, uh, which is strange. Uh, okay, and the other thing we want to do is we want to get our little graph thing going. Um, so that's expressions to graph, and I think here we just need ex ex exps. And that is going to be, okay, it's going to be this, but it's going to be not quite that. It's going to be, okay. So table of, uh, no, wrong one. We want the one that just basically said this one. La, 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 la. And obviously, it's not going to be. It's going to be. So this is the graph of. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to be a little bit more clever and not return the graph. Just return the um, the er the the edges of the graph. So this is um, this. Um, actually, it's not even that. And where i comes from expressions to function? Yes. I said that as though I, as I knew what I was doing. I don't really. Um, expressions to function of exps. And I don't even think I need a, I don't even need a, um, can I do this on one line? No, I can't quite do that. I don't even need a module because this is a very simple thing to do. In fact, I think I don't need them. I don't think I need this either here. I think I can just do this. Set it and be done with it. Damn, I'm good. OK. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep these two lines here, but I'm going to wipe out the rest of the notebook. And then evaluation. Restart session. Restart session. <gasps> They're on to me. Okay, new notebook. We are, we're getting there. And I guess the only problem is I need to now update BC Lib staging, which fortunately is right here. <laughs> so that's not even hard. Okay. Uh, I guess it's automatic save. Magic happens. Let's see what this does. Okay, why are we not getting our lovely boxy thing? Is that because it's not a global style? Okay, that's okay. That's okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. And so now I should be able to take. I'm just going to call this equations. I'm also going to do this to it because I don't. So now I can just say eek ins equal that. Okay, good. Now we can use some of our new magic functions. And expressions to meta function is probably like the bomb. It's probably like the function of the functions. And we're going to put it into just uh, so we don't, you know, don't get um, I want to make sure we're not saving variables like f. So that I should be able to assign this to temp 1817 and then do a question temp 1817 and see what happens. Yeah, very nice. Very, very nice. Um, that is that is gorgeous looking. Okay. And the other thing I want out of that was expressions to edges. Um, and we will set that to temp 1818. Expressions to edges of the equations that we have here. Um, actually, I do want to see that one. Okay, nice. Uh, and then we could do graph of temp 1818 vertex labels to automatic. And now we should get back the same graph. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So now we can do shortest path um, is it graph shortest path? No. Shortest? Find shortest path. Okay. From JD to ET in the graph that I didn't name. And I'm wondering if I could do it with temp 1818 pretend Temp 1818 is a graph. It's not, but let's see if I can pretend it is. And it might just complain that 1818 is not. A Whoa! So I don't have to wrap it inside of graph. It just knows. Okay. Um, so now, in theory, so we know there's a temp 1817 of JD, M, JD, and I bet you anything it's n this is not going to work because this is, um, all right, Pomodoro, back in two and two.
Okay, and we are back. Okay, so this is not going to be a function because we never have a second parameter that looks like this. Now this should be a function if I can get it to work. Okay, problems have occurred. Occurrences are occurring. Oh, and I probably meant to put this, yeah, well this is an actually an output. Right, sorry, I meant to put this over here, of course. This is a function, I don't know if Mathematical will recognize it as one. Did not. However, if we do this, then we take the, uh, the variable that we actually want, this should be a pretty well-defined function. And it is not. Okay. Hmm. Okay. We do see there is a function that goes from JD to MJD. It should take as input JD, so I am stumped. Let's take a look at it. Oh, right, sorry. Of JD. Because of the way these things are written. Okay, and we did get something out of that. Okay. So now we somehow need to compose it with the function that goes from MJD to Unix, which we do know there is one of those. And that one is going to be, hopefully this time we'll get it all right, MJD to Unix of MJD. So now we'll have two functions here that we need to compose. And we probably don't need this anymore. Okay. Oh, it doesn't like that. Let's see what's wrong with this. Oh, yeah. It's this, this, this. Okay. So now the question is... This takes JD to MJD. Um, so this is MJD equals this. So now to combine these two, we would just put this crap into here. And that should give us JD um, to Unix. God have... M oh, hello, 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 hello! Uh, yes, I did understand there is some uh, sort of contest involving an ellipsoid. Uh, it began about two hours ago, I believe. Uh, I'm not really familiar with what it's about. I think it's, uh, I think they call it soccer in Europe or something, but uh, I believe some sort of Native Americans are playing and some sort of uh, gold miners are playing. I'm not really clear on the details there. Uh, but, you know, I, I wish them a good ellipsoid uh, contest. So now, if this works, I should just be able to substitute this with this. And that is how we do a functional composition. And also, it is probably one of the goddamn ugliest things in the world. So let's see if that actually did what we want. And that, I think, is actually accurate. Um, I have no idea if it is or isn't accurate. Um, so that presumably takes the Julian date and converts it to Unix. Um, mm, maybe. Um, okay, uh, these are actually not linear differential equations. Corona, I assume you mean not the beer and not the sun's uh, atmosphere, but rather the virus that we have. Uh, no, this is not, unfortunately, any of that stuff. This is basically the same thing I was doing last time, saying if you know how to get from, uh, you know, let's say, one ephemeral time to Unix, 
and modify Julian date to Unix and Julian date to modify Julian date, can you get to, these arrows represent the things you can do directly. Ephemeris time to Unix directly, Unix time to modify Julian date exactly, uh, uh, blah, 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 not exactly, but uh, yeah. Uh, but you can't, so you can't go from ET to MJD because there's no single arrow that does that. But you can, the question is, can you combine these two arrows to do that? Um, and the answer to that is, if this is correct, then yes. If this is not correct, then no. It doesn't look super correct because this is a very strange looking number, but, um, but you never know. Um, so if this is correct, this will take you from, um, so this will take us from MJD Unix. MJD is, This will do something. Um, but the idea is we're trying to take functions and compose them to give us new functions that give us new functionality. And so this is, um, so we're starting with the Julian date and going to the modified Julian date. That's a pretty simple function. Then we're looking at the function that takes us from the modified Julian date to Unix. Um, so there's this one, this one, and now we're going to hop JD all the way up to Unix. So what we're saying is we go from um, modified Julian date to Unix, and then inside of that we go from Julian date to modified Julian date. And it just occurred to me this is not what I want. I think this, I don't think I need another um, brace around that because this is going to be a list by itself. Okay. This number does not look at all correct. Um, so something, something here is wrong. Um, no, wait, maybe not. Okay, so this would be saying that the function uh, this is really ugly. This is a way of combining functions, but it's very, very ugly. Um, I'm tempted to see if this is even correct. Um, because something tells me it is not. Um, modify Julian day minus that over that, and then, okay, and then, okay, so that's Unix from modify Julian day. This is Julian day to modify, wait a minute, no, it's not. Um, that's suspicious. Oh, no, that's okay. That That is okay. That's correct, too. And so if I compose those two, um, That does not look like it's going to work. And yet I'm not seeing why. All right. So let's start off with JD equal to this sucker. That means MJD is going to equal zero. And this number is not going to be the uh, the Unix time at um, some, something is weird here. MJD 
Um, I'm going to question if this formula is correct. Take the modified Julian date, let's say zero. Uh, this is probably not correct. Um, the Unix time is... The modified Julian date is 2000, so this would be MJD times 86400 plus... All right, so I did something wrong here. Either I copied a function wrong, or my whole Astro Formulas library was never correct to begin with. So this says the modified Julian date, well, it should actually tell me what that is. Um, number of days since 2000 equal to Unix time that, true Julian date that. So MJD to Unix. So Unix to MD, oh. Oh, I've got that backwards. Yeah, I've heard the ads are supposed to be really the best part of it. Um, I, and that you could probably catch them on YouTube the next day. So again, I am not... Uh, although, because, because you're here, and because now I have to ask, are the Native American uh, tribes winning against the gold diggers? Who, who is currently in the lead? Is it halftime? Is it third quarter? I know the game started about two hours ago. That uh, that has been impressed into my memory, and we might as well get an update. I guess I could just Google it, huh? Um, so for all of you who give a rat's ass about this, let's take a look. Okay, it looks like it's a tie between the uh, gold diggers and the Native Americans. Um, it's third quarter, about 14, that's about the whole thing. I think uh, football quarters are 15 minutes each, so um, so we basically just started into the third quarter. Just done with the, um, um, for a second there when you said, I have no clue, this shit is boring as fuck, I don't even know why I wanted to have a look. That's really more about my stream than about this game. I actually do know how to, I do know, I used to be a big fan of, uh, I used to watch football quite a bit, like, uh, 20, 30 years ago when I was younger. Um, I, I had favorite teams and all that stuff. Uh, neither of these was on my favorite teams list. The 49ers have always been pretty good. The Kansas City Chiefs um, have not been that good. Usually the NFC, where the 49ers play, is a stronger division. Uh, than the AFC where the uh, Kansas City Chiefs play, but um, but uh, yeah, so it looks like we're in the third quarter. Uh, obviously, this means there's more, you know, 13 minutes 37 seconds of game time plus 15 minutes more. Uh, oh, 13 minutes 28 seconds. So this game's probably going to be over in say like an hour and a half, maybe maybe let's say by 8 p.m. my time, which will be a total of three and a half hours of play time. Um, yeah, I do, and I'm not proud of myself for that. I used to love this game, and I used to watch it, and it was fun. Uh, usually it's fun because you hang out with friends and stuff, and you all cheer and jump around and, and eat until your stomach explodes. Uh, and then you worry about it when you're older. So I'm older now, and I'm worrying about all the uh, gorging I did when I was younger. Pretty sad. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back here and, I think, correct our our error here and let's see so this is unix is equal to this that's fine unix to mjd is mjd is equal to unix minus this and then J mjd is equal to that and then mjd to unix you should be able to, to derive from all of this stuff stuff JD, all of this stuff you should be able to, um, to rationalize. Now, this is the only one that's vaguely interesting, is it converts the, um, the, the Julian date to, um, to the Greenwich Mean Sidereal Time, which actually is interesting, but unfortunately the way I have it done here, it's too ugly. Uh, if you rationalize that, um, 
it turns out it just it's a formula that nothing can nothing can convert to but we can make a simpler version of this say gmst equals um, um, without rationalizing this and okay so 18 plus uh, this and instead of t d of course we mean modified Julian date so mjd so this might actually get us something useful let's see if it can no what 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 okay there happy okay um, so now let's let's see let's fix up our equations really quickly and make it this which are number one they're corrected and number two they also include something that's almost useful like the modified uh, like the Greenwich mean standard time Greenwich mean solar time sidereal time sidereal time now let's see what this does okay unix is equal to that mjd is equal to that jd is equal to that gmst is equal to that um wait why is gmst not one of my oh did i not assign this to anything oops so just gonna do it but don't assign it to anything all right one more time um hey that's looking pretty damn good now why is gmst not uh, oh that's the shortest path so now let's see i want to convert unix to gmst which is actually something that's useful to do so why don't we find the path between unix hang on hang, hang on um this might actually be accurate okay all right so so gonna be really really careful here how we're building this up um jd to mjd mjd to unix so jd to unix is this sucker um and i think the the new thing that we've created here is uh we're going from okay pomodoro back in two and two And we are back. There's apparently a couple of aliens who have showed up. Brain slug and blood trail. Once again, kind of wish I knew what that meant. And give me a second here. I need to note down something that's involving real life. Um, OK. 
Okay. Okay, one more thing. This is going to take a couple of minutes here while I... I hate real life, but every so often, you got to do it, you know. Okay. I think that took care of it all. Wait, you have I don't really have a life. I want to emphasize here I have what's known as a nano life. It is a small portion of a life that I found while walking on the beach, which is odd because Albuquerque is landlocked. Um and I picked it up and I nurtured it. I don't know whose life it is. Uh I hope one day it'll grow into a full healthy life. Right now it is just sort of a sickly portion of a life. Is that? Okay, that looked like to me like Gabe Kaplan, who played uh, Cotter on Welcome Back, Mr. Cotter on Welcome Back, Cotter. But, uh, but I'm guessing he does not have time to show up here. Okay. So what the hell was I trying to do here? Oh yeah, I was trying to show that if you can go from... Why is this gotten all gray now? I'm not happy about that. Hang on, let me do a degrayification here by redoing this. Ungray yourself! There we go. Okay. So we're trying to show JDD Unix. So this is... I'm trying to come up with sort of a general way of saying this. Um, JD to Unix of JD. And this is equal to, but the question is how, how do we get there? And this is the... Um, this is the secret sauce here that we... So the idea is this is how we would combine um, something to get the transitive closure on a graph. Uh, and this is what we actually, this is something that's really, really worth um, noting down somewhere. And this is why temp 1817. So this says if you have MJD to Unix, no, god damn it, JD to MJD, MJD to Unix, you can get JD to Unix. And this is the sort of the calling parameter for that. Um, so we're going JDD. JD, JD. okay, so this is now we should be able to say. Um, oh, what the hell? Let's just go crazy with this. 1817. So temp 1817, the function that converts from the JDD Unix of JD. Oh, we already have that. Sorry, we can actually now call it. Um, of the Julian date, um, good chip lollipop, let's say of this number, which should, should be the year 2000. If this, uh, this works out, this should be the Unix time for the year 2000, which will be this number here, 94672, blah, 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 blah. And there it is. Very nice. Uh, and so now the question is, what's the generic here for the combinatory? What's the generic way of doing this combination? Um, so, let's see. So, JD to MJD Unix. Um, first, third, first. Second, third, first, second. So, you combine the first and the second, second and the third to get first to third. That almost makes sense to me now. Um, I'm going to put a little notation here so I can see it if you say anything afterwards, which you are welcome to say. So now in theory we could do this again now with JD to Unix, but we don't have to because we've done uh, JD to Unix, sorry, for JD to ET, but we could just do, um oh wait. Oh, so we did JD to MJD, we already have JD to Unix, which we now have. Um, so we could do a whole bunch of these suckers now. Um, okay. What? I'm just tired. Hmm? No, I, just, I was just putting that there so... I wouldn't miss it if you typed another message, because there's a whole row of purples already. 
and I wouldn't have noticed another purple, but now that I have my little uh, symbol there, I can notice if you say anything, and you said something there, see, I can tell. I think the aliens might have invented the coronavirus. Um, well, because the corona is another name for the sun's atmosphere, in addition to being a fine, uh, fine alcoholic beveraging product. Um, you know, uh, the, the weird thing though is, despite all the worry about the coronavirus, it's actually fairly minor in humans. It doesn't really, for most of us, it's not going to affect us that much. So, the question is, why would the aliens want to give us a minor virus? And I think I figured it out, actually. Because this virus is so minor, um, or we think it's minor, we'll get it, we'll get over it, but of course, you know, viruses mutate. So the coronavirus that we get, it gives us a couple of sniffles, not a big deal. But then what we're actually doing is we're helping their natural selection. Because then the stronger ones, the ones we can't kill off with our natural immune system, have now become stronger. They'll invade, you know, and then, uh, and so the coronavirus will kill off like the really weak, weak people in, in our society who, who we don't, probably don't need. Um, unfortunately, I'm probably one of them, but still. The weak, the sickly, the old, the, the, the useless. The modified coronavirus, which will be a little bit stronger, will then kill off the people who are, you know, sort of the second tier of weakest people. And then the third and fourth. So eventually the coronavirus will become a super virus. And in the process of doing so, it will slowly kill off the layers of humanity until it kills off everybody, except of course the aliens themselves, uh, by which I mean Republicans, and th therefore Donald Trump will get his second term. It's a very fancy strategy to uh, get Donald Trump out of this impeachment thing. But that is, that is what the coronavirus is. It was invented by the Republicans and by Donald Trump to take over humanity. And of course, when I say Donald Trump, I don't mean the man, I mean the strange fuzzy thing on top of his head, which is, as everyone knows, an alien that is controlling what passes for his brain. Okay, so good, glad we figured that out. Until that happens, however, I will continue with my attempt to um, combine functions together like this. And I guess now that I've done that, we actually need to go into some functions that are not quite as dull, unfortunately. Um, okay, so this is, this is a function we should be able to get out of uh, we should be able to get out of these other two functions. We just need to do one minor change here. And that is, and that is we need to change the arc tangent um, into a tangent-like function. Hmm. So in theory, this should be pretty easy to do, this RA Deklat Law and Alt to GMST. That should not be tremendously difficult. Some of the other ones we looked at were insanely difficult. So let's go ahead and get a closed form for this. No, wait, do I already have one? Hang on. Um, Orctan, blah, blah, blah. This is a comma. And I think I just need to make this into a Um, okay, is there a comma in this one? Yes, there is. So we basically need one without a comma. Wait. Okay. So we can probably get rid of this now because we have this all inside of, um, inside of our staging library, plus more. All right, so I think what I'm going to do here is, uh, okay, oops, I did not mean to do that. Okay, so we will start with this function here. And we will kill everything else. Die, die like, oh, no, 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 let's, I'm going to save this and then kill everything. Control C, get rid of this, reset the evaluation, which never does anything anyway. Restart the session, doesn't work. 
The only thing it does is bring up Little Wolfman. I think that's literally its only purpose. Okay. So now we will have this nasty looking function. Why did I have control C? This is freaking Emacs. Okay. And then I will want RA deck lat lon GMST to AZ alt of RA deck lat lon GMST one. That's not gonna be quite enough. I need a little bit more than that. And that's going to be this hideous. That's not too bad, actually. Um, but we're going to make one addition to it. The, the thing that breaks... Um, and I want to make sure this is... I'm going to double check to make sure this is the correct formula, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, replace the two argument tangent with the one argument tangent. And there it is. Uh, now, I want to make sure that's actually correct. Let me see if I've got it over here anywhere. Arc tan, yeah. That's a fake simplification. That is, give this to me an in input form, and I'm going to be really careful here and note that it is um, below our fake, assuming simp tan. So this sucker is equal to the azimuth. So we would say, a z equal equal this. Um, and this does actually solve for all the vari uh, variables, interestingly enough. And we'll do the same thing for the altitude. A little bit more complicated, but still quite doable. Okay. Um, I, I have I have mixed feelings about this. I get the feeling for some reason this is not going to go as well as I think it will. But hey. Um, it's going to go better than if I hadn't done the little shortcut thingy, but, but it's still not going to go that well. Okay, so this part, nothing yet. Now... Now it gets interesting. Expressions to meta function. Uh, these are the expressions. And I'm going to stick them all into F just because I care. And this, this is where it's going to time out or something. Um, oh my god. That actually worked. Oh man. This is this is bad. All right, I'll give you a few more seconds here, but then I've created a monster. Okay, stop. You're fine. See if we can do this one at least. Nice. Okay. The, the weird thing is it actually worked. Um, so let's see if we can do expressions to edges. Which should be... Which should be a lot easier to deal with. Because that's just going to be a list of of variables. Hey, 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 check it out. That is some good looking edges there. Now let me see if I can gra graphing them shouldn't be too bad. And then the question is, can we get can we get other uh, crap out of this that we didn't have before? That's not looking really good, but let's, let me, um, it's 
totally automatic. Automatic. Okay. So at the moment, this is not looking great because it looks like it's like three separate things. From this, we can get the altitude. Um, and the azimuth. So this is sort of the original function. Um, from here, from this, azimuth, GMST, longitude, no, wait a minute. We can get the declination. And from the latitude, GMST, longitude, RA, alt, we can also get the declination. Um, this is actually interesting that we can do all this stuff. Um, can I make this bigger? It's a little bit too tight. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. The only thing I'm worried about here is these are not in order. I'm worried that some of these might be duplicates. So this is the very original thing that says if you give me RA, DEC, LAT, LONG, GMST, I can spit out the azimuth and the altitude for you. Not a problem. If you give me the latitude, the azimuth, the GMST, the longitude, and longitude, you can, can get the declination out of that. Um, if you give me this information, I can give you the latitude. If you give me this information, that's vaguely interesting. That if I, well, let's see. Maybe it's not really. Um, let's see. What else can we get out of this if knowing other stuff? Okay. So this really says what we expected to say, which is given any of these, um, with the weird exception of this, where, where you can get two different things, this is just saying you can get. Um, you can get um, any for any five of the. Let's see, how many variables are there? One, two, three, four, seven. Wowzers. If you have any six of the seven in general, actually, hang on. Five of the seven, five of the seven give you declination. Interesting. Any five can give you one of the others. Okay, it is Pomodoro time. Back in two and two. And we are back. <sighs> hello, 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 ISO operator, Mr. Person who has moved in. 
not in my house, because otherwise it'd be kind of weird. Although I guess with the uh, new, uh, yay! And by here, I know you don't mean in the chat. I mean, you are here in the Duke City. Okay. Slightly more concerning because I didn't actually, we didn't actually decide to live together. But um, are you are you the guy that I accidentally just trapped in the basement? Because if you are, I'm I'm not sorry, but um, I am going to be flooding the basement with lava later on. Okay. Na 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 na. This is like a single white female, except uh, you're probably too young to remember that movie. Uh, gotta go to work tomorrow. Well, you know, <laughs> we have to keep you in quarantine for a little while. Um, yeah, you are, okay. Well, it is great that you are here. In the sense of, it is not great that you are here. Um, but actually it is great that you are here. Um, Okay, we're gonna pretend to. Okay, there's more. There's more. There's more. Okay. La 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 la. la. Distraction. <laughs> okay, good. I like I like the f sound. It's very um. It's not quite as good as a s or a b a b a b. a b. How do you make a b sound? F uh. Ba 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 fa 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 jingle all the way. Um, there is actually um, an optical illusion, so you only hear half. This is not going to start out as a good relationship here. You know, our communication should not be. Um, if you're only hearing half of what I say, that is, it's it's better communication than most married couples have. But we're not a married couple. We're bros. Um, and you know what they say, bros before hoes, or, or you know, bros with hoes, or bro-ho, bro-ho, it, it really depends on how you like it, it, it it's very uh, specific to the individual, but, um, well, if you're only hearing half of what I say, uh, that is not a great start to communication, but, you know, we, we can live with it, uh, I mean, if you were a woman, I wouldn't be listening to even half of what you said. But, you know, I try to think that as a guy you have the amount of valuable things you say is higher than the amount of valuable things a woman would say. And um, probably going to be in trouble for saying that. Uh, yes, yes, that is uh, apparently the case. Uh, you are uh, haunting my, my house, which, you know, I, I'm okay with. I mean, I haven't told you all of the house secrets. So, there's a good chance you'll end up killing yourself by tomorrow, because there are a lot of uh, dangers in this house. If you just don't do things exa exactly the right way, you know, you'll get fried. Um, and I'm not, you know, and I, I'm not going to say that's what happened to my last three roommates. Uh, they just moved out of town quietly and without any trace. They're out of town. Okay? So if you ever see anything that looks like the charred remains of a roommate, it's not. They moved out of town. The charred remains are from steak. Steak that I tried to cook on the barbecue. Steak. Not the charred remains of my former roommates. Not the charred remains. Okay. So welcome to the welcome to the house. Um, and uh, okay, so where the hell were we? Oh yeah, we were <laughs> kind of kind of a big letdown from that. To we were trying to determine whether having these variables and this variable would give us uh, an additional variable. Um, although I don't think I think maybe it's in this case here. Um, Okay, that sounds good. I saw you hear the stream isn't working for you yet. Um, you know, get your internet connection, get your whatever the hell it is you need, um, and then give me your address right here on stream because you already did. Um, 
and then, you know, someone, someone will show up at your door. <laughs> someone. Not necessarily me. Uh, and take you out to, let's call it beer. I mean, they'll take you somewhere, they will give you some sort of drink or injection, and, you know, I mean, think of it, think about it this way. Are you really using your kidneys, I mean, to the maximum possible effect? Couldn't they go to help somebody else? Okay. So now getting back to this uh, wonderful world of mathematics. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you for dropping in. I swapped later. Feel free to hang out, even if you don't have good internet. Um, because, gosh darn it, this is math. And math is freaking cool. <laughs> okay. So the question we w I think we're trying to answer here. Um, if we have this, lat as GMST lawn, RN can get deck, can we then use this to get this to get something else? And the answer is maybe. Because we could then use that to get GMST. With that, we could get, we've got to be careful here. We're going in circles, maybe. Got to be careful. Um, OK. Now let's take a quick look. We're going to kind of jump, jump around here. Uh, what are some of the questions we're trying to answer? This, the, this library is being written uh, to answer um, several questions. Um, maybe. How, to, how does Moonrise Moonset Azimuth vary with time? Um, that is interesting. Huh. Okay. And that might actually be a special case. So let's see. We want to know the azimuth. And what we know is the altitude is zero. We're going to pretend that rising occurs when the altitude is zero. Realistically, um, rising occurs when the altitude is negative 34 minutes because of refraction at the horizon. But let's, let's, let's chill. Um, so we're saying if we know the um, altitude, um, if we know the altitude, the longitude, the right ascension, and the declination, uh, I'm trying to figure out how we can get this without the GMST. Um, in other words, I want to see if we can get this stuff here. Nope. Longitude, right ascension, latitude, alt and declination, we can get the GMST, and the GMST, with that, we can get the um, azimuth, I think. Okay. Focus. Um, no, because we need the altitude for this one. So let's see, can we do one without the altitude? Longitude, latitude, RA deck in azimuth. Uh, no, we have the altitude here, zero. Um, so let's see. If you know the longitude, the right ascension, the. Uh, okay, so we can compute the GMST of rising, presumably with this formula. The GMST, something rises, will be. Um, RE minus lon lat, okay, okay. Um, um, so this function here, so I want to see what that function, it should be a very simple function. This should say um, at what given time does a longitude RA lat blah, 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 uh, you know, when does it reach a certain altitude? And this should not be a difficult um, calculation. Oh, it will be, but it shouldn't be. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and run this, but we're not going to print out the results. And then I'm going to say, can you give me the function? And I will go ahead and print out this graph. Um, the function that takes 
Uh, I guess we can do it two different ways. Deck that as or. Uh, and here we, we do want it from altitude. So, lawn array lat alt deck. I thought for a second it was going to know which ones were available. That would be really awesome. Uh, lat alt deck. Convert that to GMST and apply it to lawn array. Oops, no, no, no. Apply it to the list. Lawn array lat alt deck. So what is that function that will give us that data? And it should be simple. Um, I say it like because it's going to be, um, it's not going to be simple, and then like I want to pretend it is. And that is going to be motherfucker. Okay. Now we can do a little bit better than this because we do we do want to solve for altitude equals zero. So tell us when the rising and setting time of something is, given that we know this other crap. And this should really, really simplify down, by which I mean it won't. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> That's not bad, actually. Um... And I think we can do a little bit better by doing uh, two things to this. We can simplify it, but we can also delete duplicates, because I think some of those are the same now. Duplicates, and then simplify. Okay. Dun dun. There should be at least two answers, because that is going to be the uh, rise and set time. So minus ln plus ra minus r cosine of this and minus ln and ra plus the r cosine of this. So now let's see if we can find the, the function that I computed in a much more difficult way. Um, da, 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 da. As conditions simp ten. Oh wow, is that it? Um. um to GMST. So this is actually the function we, we saw earlier. Declat to time above alt. Declat to absolute value of uh, the azimuth. MJD to ecliptic. Um, okay, simplification that doesn't always apply. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. And I think this relations thing is actually pretty old. Eliminate. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I could have sworn at one point I had like rise and set times. And I actually might have them somewhere that is not here. Uh, so time above alt, uh, declat alt to time above alt would be the subtraction of the two s the two solutions that we just came up with uh, for zero, which would be r cosine minus. So this is actually yeah, this is actually correct uh, because this this and this are just the minus non plus r is that's just the hour angle, and we should probably add that into our computations because that is actually uh, better to use than uh, longitude and ra. So so that's not bad. That's actually uh, pretty good. I mean, it's hideously ugly. But we are getting what we want out of this. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and paste it before I forget. Um, but yeah. This is how you get to know what Greenwich Mean Sidereal Time is if you happen to know these other variables. So this does not answer the question, though, what other formulas, w I mean, that's one formula we, we already had. What other formulas can we pull out of this thing? And once again, we need to make it much bigger. Shiny, where'd it go? Okay. Um, hmm. 
and see here what's interesting. Got to be very careful how we do this. Um, suppose we have the altitude and we want the azimuth. Um, so the question is, if we have the altitude, can we get the... Obviously, the altitude to azimuth by itself, we can't... Th there's not enough information. But suppose we have the altitude... Um, the this other stuff here, and we want to get the azimuth. So we get the declination, which can we now put into here and get the azimuth. So can we do alt to azimuth is the question. Um, and unfortunately, this is not a chain issue. This is actually a much, much deeper issue. This is a fucking annoying issue, actually. Um, we can get from here to here. Then from we get from here to here to these things all combined with each other. Um, we can get from here to here by subset inclusion to here <laughs> to here. So the answer is yes, we can get from altitude to azimuth, but can we do it in a way that doesn't look hideous? Um, and I don't think we can actually. I can certainly try to find, uh, I'll do go ahead and do the shortest path, but I mean, it's not going to work, <laughs> basically. That's the issue. Find shortest path in, um, okay, I guess you want a name now. So picky. We'll give you call you G1919. We could actually just do it without having to put the, make it into a graph. But G1919 from alt to as. There won't be one. There is no path from there to there. Um, and it should just tell us null or can't do that. Yeah, empty path. Okay. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is start creating paths that are Pomodoro back in two and two. Excuse me, we are back. Now, we're trying to find a formula to get from, let's say, the altitude and some other stuff. 
I thought I just made this bigger. Oh, every time I do a reload, I guess. Excuse me. Uh, that breaks. Okay. So here's how we're going to do this. We're trying to get from altitude to azimuth, just a sort of a test. And this says if we have these things here, and honestly I want to call that the hour angle, but anyway, uh, if we have these things here, um, or these things here, these say the same things? Lat? No, they're not. Um, the idea is we can somehow get to this, right, right, because we can get the declination. Um, lat, uh, okay, so we have the azimuth, uh, no, we're trying to get altitude to azimuth. So we have this stuff, we can get the declination, once we have the declination, we have enough to do this, then we can get to the, the azimuth. So the, um, oh man, so we need this formula combined with this formula to get the uh, to get the go from the sorry with this formula to go from the uh, altitude to the azimuth given everything else okay let's take a look at that then okay Man. Okay. So we want first uh, latitude GMST ln RA, which is just the probably going to end up calling that the hour angle. I, I think that's that's going to be a better name for it. Um, altitude can take us to the declination and give it to me for a given lot. Uh, da 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 da. And except you put these into little bracy things. And again, these functions are more for developers. We would clean this up a bit if we wanted to use it raw. But let's see what this is. Come on, don't be hideous. Okay, that's just the graph. And then the formula is, I guess, kind of ugly. Um, and then using that... This is it's a freaking nightmare. All right, I'm going to try doing a simplify on that. Um, uh, although it may not help. And at some point, I might need to add conditions here. We are cranking this thing away. Does not want to simplify this. And it's not going to work. It's not going to simplify. It's going to take too long. So if we use this as our declination, and I guess we've got to be a little bit careful to see if this is inside of an, uh, a list inclusion or something. Now what bugs me at a very high level is that this is not going to simplify. This does not appear to simplify. Um, this, this, I mean, this whole answer should be much, much simpler than this. Um, I guess I can stop printing the... No, I can't, actually. Oh, wow. You know it's bad when it won't render. 10, 9, 8, 7, 5, done. Alright, let's go ahead and get an input form, which is a form we needed in any way, ultimately. Okay, 
Okay, my browser is pretty close to frozen, actually. And I'm talking about bad frozen, not like Elsa frozen. That is not input form. I hate to tell you. Um, in fact, not only is that not input form, that may have some... Okay. I've seriously broken Mathematica now. Um, I think there might be more than one answer here, so, okay. Maybe not. There we go. That's... That's what we want. Um, I'm going to delete duplicates. I don't know if there's any of these are duplicates, but if they are, we can delete them. Assuming that it's going to let me keep typing. Wow. Okay, I think I've frozen it. I have brought time to a halt. I guess I could close out some of these other ones that I don't need anymore. Um... No, oh, by the way, it looks like we're in the fourth quarter now. It looks like the gold diggers uh, are beating the uh, Native Americans um, by quite a quite a large score. Uh, apparently, they scored some of these point thingies in the third quarter. We are winding down the game now, and it looks like my prediction that the game is going to end at 8 p.m. my time, uh, which is pretty damn late in the Eastern Time Zone, 10 p.m. So, um, don't know why exactly, but anyway. Okay. That's a great statement to make, since I have no idea what it refers to. Oh! They had the touchdown and they kicked the ball through the thingy. Um, uh, the thingy might be what's called the conversion. I think the thingy is this big, funky-looking thing here, uh, which they kick balls through when, they've decided th when they get too tired of running. I don't really understand that completely. Um, so I'm sort of tempted now to keep going until the end of this uh, this uh, ellipsoid game-like creature that's going on here. Um, whereas at the same time I have frozen mathematics. Oh. What the hell? Oh, okay. We're kind of back. Um, I'll run this again just for the fuck of running it. Oh, yeah, I probably should have made that a function call around this. Delete duplicates of all of this, I don't think it's going to help any. I think it's still going to be very ugly. Um, learning vocabulary. We'll go to bed soon. Remind me where you're from, Fierce Crocodile. I, I'm pretty sure... Um, remind me where you're from. I, I can't remember if you're from the United States or not. If you're not, it's already pretty damn late in the Eastern Time Zone. If you're in Europe, it's like fucking tomorrow. In fact, it's beyond fucking tomorrow. It's 2 a.m. in 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 Greenwich. Um. Okay. So there you have this nice simple formula that will convert. Motherfucker. Why is that formula so fucking complicated? 
It's the formula that will convert to give you declination out of all this crap. Now, now we could input this declination that we get and stick it back into the formula that gives us azimuth. So we could do that. Um, and it occurs to me that we, we don't want to do that. Um, but we could if we wanted to. Um, so let's let's be a little bit nicer here and let's say that we wanted um, okay. We wanted to get the declination at um, rise time. Uh, we wanted to get the uh, yeah the declination right because we wanted to get the azimuth at rise time. So let's see if this simplifies any. That actually might be simpler. Might be quite a bit simpler actually. Okay. And by quite a bit simpler, I mean I might freeze the screen again. It might be that all of this other crap is slowing it down. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. Get rid of this. We will keep the uh, ellipsoid contest open. Um, this really shouldn't be taking up a lot of... Uh, this, these are just uh, basic functions. So this might be taking up a bit. And is this now back to... Yeah. We fucked this up pretty good. So clearly there's still a lot of work to be done here. What's interesting is the fact that it's doable is, is, just, is just shocking that we can actually do this. Um, it's not shocking. I mean, it's... Meanwhile, while this runs, let's see what's going on here. We have 6 minutes, 23 seconds um, of game time. Um... Apparently, you can even watch the game somehow. I don't really fully understand that. Um, so apparently, everybody is seven minutes behind, and they were tied at ten. Now, we're, like, way the hell up here. Okay, here we go. And let's see if this actually... Hit return... Here we go, here we go, here we go. 3.35 a.m. where you are. You don't know the rules of the game, and you're trying to learn vocabulary for an American game. Um, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. Okay, so this is... This is still pretty bad, but it's not intolerably bad. It's kind of like we could use this. And we could use this to get the azimuth time at rising, at geometric rising. So, so this tells us what the declination is at... Wait, 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 wait. What? What the hell did I just do? Um... Okay. So if I know the latitude, longitude, the current time, right ascension, and the altitude of something, I can get its declination. Um, if then I'll choose the altitude to be zero. Okay. That's probably not what I wanted, though. I probably want the GMST at its rising, and then from the GMST I can get the... Um, I can get the azimuth. So maybe this was not the right thing to do. So maybe we just want to get the, um, you know, we want to get the longitude, right ascension, latitude, alt declination. So we want another GMST of rising. And that I think was not actually that hard to get. Oh, the red players made a touchdown. Oh, they didn't... Okay, yes, that, that's the call the conversion. Um, you get six points for a touchdown, one point for kicking the, the ball through the T structure. Um, yes, it's, it's called the conversion. Um, I think you can also convert by trying to throw a, a pass from the 10-yard line into the end zone, and at one point that used to be a two-point conversion, 
but I think no one does that anymore. It's almost always they kick it through the goalposts to get the... Uh, so were the red team the ones who were winning? Well, let's find out. Oh, no, they were the ones who were losing, so it, they've tightened up the score. They, they both look like red, but I guess one of them is wearing their white uniforms. I guess these guys are wearing their white uniforms. Wait, I don't care. But anyway, the, the game is tightened up a little bit. Um, six minutes, 13 seconds left. The uh, Kansas City Chiefs, uh, who are the Chiefs of all of Kansas City. And by the way, Kansas City is in Missouri. There is a Kansas City in Kansas, but it's much smaller. San Francisco is in California. And I used to live there for a while. It's actually a pretty nice place. Well, not San Francisco, but what they call the Bay Area. Um, so, so that's interesting. Okay. Yes, after a touchdown, you get to do the conversion. You get to attempt the conversion. Okay, so this is actually pretty sweet. We have these two times here. Um, so we get this is the rise of the GMST time. And I think we can even go as far as to just get the first element so we don't get flooded. Uh, and we can call this rise time. Um, and then, because we know the rise time, we can now use f of deck lat gmst lawn ra gets azimuth and apply it to our deck lat gmst though is going to be rise time um, longitude and ra so this should give us the azimuth at the rise time, given that we know everything else. Something tells me this is not going to do what I want, but let's see. Okay. Whoa! That's not bad, actually. I think that not only that simplifies, but that's not actually a bad answer. The rise time is the arc tangent of of this hideousness, which is not too hideous if you look at it. Hello, hello, hello! Oh, it is time. Okay, Pomodoro, back in two and two. Okay, and we're back. What's interesting here is, as I expected actually, 
this function only depends on the de uh, declination in the latitude, even though it could have theoretically depended on the right ascension, the longitude, and the Greenwich Mean Standard Time. So it's actually sort of a nice way of seeing that um, we get cancellations here. I don't think this really simplifies, but let's, let me go and put a simplify in front of it. And I don't know if it's going to actually simplify. It actually does simplify a little bit. Uh, so there you go. Um, this is the azimuth at rise time. Now, I've actually done this calculation somewhere else. Um, oh, and apparently the gold diggers are still winning, just in case anyone cares. Um, I need, there it is, I need to bookmark this page. So I said the, yep, we got it. The rise time, the rise azimuth, was this, the octan of the secant, da 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 da. God, I hope that's the same as this. Um, let's, oops, let's pretend those are the same. Arctan of the secant of, well, well, okay, wait. Cosine, oh, okay, this is a two, yeah, that's a, this is a two element arctan because we, um, we, we, we preserve the, the two element. But sine over cosine is going to be cotangent and secant is still going to be secant. So, I don't know. I'm going to call this good. Um, but the general idea is finding the rising or setting time is not that difficult. Or the azimuth at rise or set is not that difficult and we've done it. We also found the time at rise and set which was very similar to the time we had here. Um, you know, the alpha, the, uh, the uh, rise time. Um, okay, so I'm pretty happy with this actually. Um, okay, and Let's see. Um, okay. Now, one other thing we need to look at is uh, what's known as a reverse interpolation function, because some of these functions we only have interpolations for, we don't have actual values for, we don't have a simple formula for them. That's going to be much, much harder, I think. Um, and I, and I don't think there's a really easy way of doing that one. Because uh, interpolations are polynomial. You can invert polynomials to a point, but you can't invert them beyond, it's difficult beyond two degrees, uh, second degree polynomials. It's almost impossible past fourth degree unless you use elliptical functions and past fifth degrees, it is, it is impossible. Uh, Gawa has proven that using field theory, at least in the general case. And there might be some special cases where you could still do it. Um, okay, so, so we have now actually done some pretty cool stuff, um, and we have, this, how long is this file? 1106 lines, not bad. Um, and now the question is, can we start answering some of these questions? Um, how does moonrise, moonset, azimuth vary with time? Um, we can't answer that actually because the moon has a very complicated uh, formula for its uh, uh, declination and right ascension. How to calculate the maximum and minimum, minimum solar azimuth at a given location? That turns out to have a very strange answer. How much of one day can be considered nighttime on average? Um, that actually turns out to be kind of a weird thing too. Expression for length of sunrise sunset as function of latitude and day of year. That one we might be able to nail. Uh, finding an hour, finding hour angle at altitude. That should be really easy. I should have answered that one already. Okay. 
that one. Um, I think I did answer this one. Yeah. Mm. And by the way, this is uh oh being a little bit sarcastic, not sarcastic, but funny. I said not to mention my answer, which I, of course, it is really nice. You should mention it. And I think he's joking there. Um, okay, so I did answer this one. Um, and I think my link to the generic is probably good enough. Um, what should the declination of a star be to marginally be marginally circumpolar given? How do I adjust the sunrise to account for elevation? Um, okay. So, and I do have a separate thing called EL, which is elevation of kilometers above the, the reference ellipsoid, which is another way of saying the Earth. Um, touchdown! Apparently, somebody else has done something of magic. And ooh, it looks like the Native American tribe has, has uh, managed to score, and I guess they have not yet made the conversion. Um, usually they do. I've ne I've, it's very rare that someone doesn't make the conversion. What's interesting here is if they don't make the conversion, the 49ers can get a field goal and tie it up. Because um, the field goal is three points. If they do get the conversion, they're going to be a, it's going to be a pain. In, they basically, the 49ers have to get a touchdown to win. Um, so I don't, I'm assuming they're going for the conversion now. Uh, and this, this is actually a big deal in some sense because if, the, if they don't get the conversion and the 49ers get a field goal, which is you can get much faster than you can get a touchdown, the game will go into overtime. So that, that's, that's exciting for people who are excited by that sort of thing. Okay. Um, okay, that, that is the... Uh, Jesus Christ. And someone's actually asked me to explain this stuff, and I never got around to it. Um, okay, and I gotta be... Here I actually am using local sidereal time instead of um, Greenwich Mean Sidereal Time and the Longitude, but um, let's see. Rise set culminates up above below a given parameter distance, angular distance, length distance, this value when treated as a constant. Um, Yeah, this is basically just Fourier analysis to get this approximate solar declination. Um, and I don't think this formula is reversible. I mean, I, actually, I don't think it's reversible at all uh, in any reasonable way. Okay. All this stuff here. So some of this stuff we can definitely answer. Some of this stuff we would actually require... Um, excuse me. Um... Let's see. Oh, wow. Okay. Hang on. Oh, I think this is actually a really cool... Um, this is really a cool way of estimating uh, elliptical orbits with... Uh, I think this is the... Yeah, this is the one I really like. This is the... Um, the reference direction is the first point of Aries. Um, and this is probably what I'm going to use to answer the how can I estimate Mars orbit as a circular orbit, because the important things are the reference direction. Um, <laughs> I'll just do the ascending node. Uh, and the, the thing we need is the inclination and the longitude of the ascending node where it actually crosses. The other stuff doesn't really matter because uh, we're pretending it's a circle, not an ellipse. Okay. All righty, let's see. Moonrise, moonset, azimuth vary with time. I mean, 
That w that could be. I mean, we still need to get the moon ri the moon's uh, right ascension in azimuth, but I mean that is doable. I mean, it's not it's not impossible to get that, and then sort of say that the um, the rise and set azimuth is based on this formula. Um, and this one I've actually partially answered, and it's uh, the answer is really weird. Okay. This one I'm pretty sure is. Um, Basically, the question is, how long does the sun stay below uh, 18 degrees if that if astronomical twilight is how you're defining nighttime? Um, I'm pretty sure I've answered this one, too, actually, different ways. Okay, so um, for some reason, I don't feel like logging off before this uh, ellipsoid contest uh, terminates, or if they're going to overtime, I'll consider that termination as well. I have been waiting for 2 hours and 12 minutes, let's see if we can go for another, um, I mean not 2 minutes, I guess this is going to be closer to 8 minutes, 7 minutes. I predicted end of game at, in, three, uh, you know, 300 hours UTC, about 6 minutes and 12 seconds from now. I did not think, oh no, they did convert, they did get their conversion 24. So it's actually very unlikely now that the game will be tied, either the 49ers will score a touchdown and win, or, um, or they will not score a touchdown and lose. So it's second and seven at the San Francisco 35. They got about 65 yards to go for a touchdown. Second down, seven yards to go. Um, gosh, I wonder what they're going to do. They're probably going to pass. I don't think they'll try to rush seven yards. I don't know what these words mean, but they sound really, really good. I will not watch overtime. I am barely going to watch this website update. <laughs> Well, it's, I mean, it's like, uh, you know, one minute, it's like eight minutes away now from the end. If you assume the four to one ratio, which is, which is how I, ass what I assume. Um, um, so now, I think we're just going to see the Kansas City Chiefs, um, the Native Americans of Mid-America, uh, they're going to take this victory. I think they were the underdogs, actually. I don't think they were the favorite team. Um, second and seven at the San Francisco 35. So, come on, next play. Uh, now, if they do go to fourth and something, they're probably going to still, uh, they're not going to punt because there's no way they can get this, uh, there's no way they can get this, uh, you know, if they get it, they punt it, the only thing that they have to hope for a fumble or uh, an interception, they're just going to play through the fourth down if they get to that point. And, of course, you do have amazing minutes in, in moments in football where someone will run, like, 90 yards for a touchdown, or in this case, 65 yards for a touchdown, and it's very dramatic. Um, so you can never really tell, but at this point, it does look like I would be favoring the Chiefs if I had to bet on this, which I, which I don't. Um, I would be... Um, yeah, I would be favoring the Chiefs if, if this was my, um, you know. There, was actually, there are actually sites, uh, both in America and in Britain, where you can bet on stuff like this. But in America, you can only bet uh, depending on where you are. And you can't, Americans can't bet in the British one either. But it does give some idea of how likely something is, according to gamblers who are, and they've got money, so they're pretty invested in, in who, you know, what happens. Uh, so we've got 1 minute 56 seconds remaining. Yes, yeah, so I was betting on UFC for some time. Uh, oh yes, 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 the uh, United Football Club. The expected value is negative. Well, the bookies have to take a, the bookies have to take a share. Um, someone once said that in horse racing, you could theoretically gain an advantage by if you bet on the correct horses, I mean, if you bet on the correct set of horses, regardless of whether they won or, lo won or lost, you would still make money. I don't think that's true. I don't think anyone's ever actually done that. Um, also, I think the way the odds work is they keep changing. I don't really know how that works in horse racing. UFC, if I understand correctly, is the United Football Club is a British thing where they play uh, soccer, uh, not football, but whatever. Okay, come on, let's get this game moving. We are having a little bit of a delay here at 156. I don't know if it's a timeout. They're doing some ads. Um, if the Native Americans have decided uh, there are games with such equilibrium or so. Um, not sure what that means. I mean, yeah, usually you're going to get odds on one side, on the other side, and then there's a gap for the, um, for the bookies to make their money. 
Yeah, you can't you can't break even by betting on both sides. Are there really so? Um, well, how can you lose if you're claiming you cannot lose? Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying most of the time uh, you will take um, right bookies take bets from both sides and take a share. But if there's ever a case where you can make money without risk, um, that's called arbitrage. And usually if there's an arbitrage opportunity, it gets closed very quickly because obviously anyone who has money will immediately jump to that and, and, and grab that. That's also true in the market. Um, back in the days when the stock exchange was not unified, you could sometimes buy a stock at 21 in one, you know, in one market, sell it at 21 and a half in another market. But that sort of situation doesn't last long because obviously someone's going to buy up all the stock at 21 and sell it at 21 and a half until the person selling at 21 is out and the person buying at 21 and a half is, has lost interest. Okay, second and 10 at the, it's not bad actually, Kansas City 49, 49 yards to go, 10 yards in the down. Um, who knows, they might, they might get this. Uh, I have no idea, only two seconds passed there. So it looks like my prediction that this game was going to end at uh, three, 300 hours UTC is wrong. We only have 58 seconds left, which means even the clock itself would be, would be more time than that. Um, of course, if I'd used my 4 to 1 ratio, I would have predicted the end at uh, 330 hours UTC because the game actually did begin at 2333 UTC or 430 p.m. my time. Um, so now I'm sort of th third and ten at Casey. That does not look good. They did not advance on that last uh, last run. Uh, clock running down very slowly, which is good. That's probably what they want. They don't. They want to. They want to get as much time as they can to get the touchdown. Um, gambling, you will lose. Well, excuse me. In general, I do have to agree with you, and it's it is set up that way. And even the places where you gamble will say gambling is supposed to be for fun. That's the, it's the enjoyment of gambling. Um, gambling for profit is usually not possible. I'm going to skip this Pomodoro because I want to watch the end of this game. If it doesn't end in 20 minutes, I'm not only really going to do Pomodoro, I'm going to get out of this stream and, um, and do something productive with my life. No, well not really, but, but you know what I'm saying. Fourth and ten. Now, this is, this is where they could punt, but they won't. And a field goal is no good to them here because because they're behind by four points. So they pretty much have to go on this one. If they don't make it, Kansas City takes possession. Kansas City is going to run out the clock. So this is this is do or die for the 49ers, and it does look like they're going to fail. Um, yes, uh, th th it has happened. Card counting where, you know, poker, not poker, blackjack, uh, is a game that's tilted against you, but, ooh, ooh, oh wait, they made it, first and ten, wait, what? Um, how, how did they lose 20 yards and get, was that an interception or something? I mean, at, at this point, the Kansas City Chiefs should have the ball. But anyway, let's see what the hell's going on. Um, let's see, and they won. Sometimes if you figure out such a constellation. Constellation? Uh, okay, situation, I think you mean. Um, card counting works because in blackjack, the odds are supposed to be against you unless you happen to know count which cards have already showed up and which cards are still to, to come, then you have, ch you know, once you're halfway through the deck, you know more about the deck than just random chance would tell you. That can be defeated by using multiple decks. Someone also figured out that if you bet every number in the lottery, um, you and the lottery pays more than what buying those tickets costs, you have an again you again have a, 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 a victory situation. There are other cases where arbitrage occurs with these complicated games, um, and it's brilliant. I you know I, I would love to find something like that. Um, Obviously, it's getting harder and harder to find it. People use supercomputers to try to find these opportunities. Um, so second and six at the San Francisco 38. So they're, I, 
Oh, maybe this means... Okay, okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Does this mean they're now 38 yards away from victory? I thought the San Francisco 38 meant... Oh, 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 something happened. Something happened. Um, with one minute and 12 seconds remaining in the game, it looks like... Ooh, these guys scored again? Oh, okay, they've won. They've won the game. It looks like there was an interception or something and the Kansas City Chiefs just took another six points. They'll probably get the conversion for another point. They're 11 points ahead at that, and this point, you were pretty much done. I think, I think the, uh, the San Francisco, um, you're ahead of my stream. Say what? Oh, you mean my stream? I mean, I'm delayed four seconds for you. Um, but this is what I'm seeing. One minute, 12 seconds left to go. Uh, looks like the Chiefs probably intercepted, I'm guessing, because they did not have possession of the ball. Uh, assuming that I'm reading this little thing right that this is meant that they had. So this is going to give possession. They're going to punt now. Give, oh, sorry. They're going to actually try to go for the conversion now to get 31. They'll probably get that. But it doesn't really matter. At this point, um, if they don't get the conversion, San Francisco needs a, a touchdown, a conversion. And they got the conversion, 11 points. Uh, that's damn near impossible. San Francisco needs to get two touchdowns in the next 72 seconds. Um, oh, you're watching the German TV stream. Okay. Um, I guess... I don't know why that would be more delayed. I mean, I'm, this is just Google. This is actually Google's own feed. This is not even a, a link to something. Um, wow, these live updates for other places are pretty pretty lame. I haven't reloaded this page, though. I'm just watching this one panel get re-uploaded, refreshed all the time. So uh, we here have been going in this non-super stream for about two hours and 23 minutes. Looks like we're going to hit about two and a half hours today. And we did two hours earlier, so we're we're going to be pretty much wasting the whole day on this stream. Most of the stream was dedicated to looking at, and okay, San Francisco, first and 10 at the San Francisco 25. I don't know if that means they're 25 yards away from the touchdown or if they are 75 yards away from the touchdown. If they're 25 yards away from the touchdown, they may actually have a shot. To me, the San Francisco 25 means their own 25, uh, which is 75 yards away from the touchdown. So, right now, um, they're going to have to go for crazy passes. They're going to have to try to get a, a touchdown, a conversion, and then somehow get the ball back from the Kansas City Chiefs before the game ends in two seconds. I do not see that happening. Uh, they're obviously going to be going from short edge plays. They want to run. The, they want to make sure the clock doesn't run out. So, so let's see what happens here. At this point, I'm guessing if anyone's still betting on this game, um, you can get really good odds for the San Francisco 49ers winning, but they won't win. So you're not going to get any money out of it. Just really good odds. Now I have the touchdown. Oh. The touchdown they gave him this point? Okay. Interesting. So I guess they are, you know, and I think um, I would be pretty annoyed if American television was delaying the game for Germans. I think perhaps Germany as a nation should stand up to that kind of bullying and, uh, I don't know, perhaps, you know, join, you know, I don't know what, if or what the delays look like in Italy or Japan or anything like that, but if there are similar delays in Italy and Japan, I could see where these countries might form sort of a, an alliance of some sort. Um, wow. Wow. And I would be very angry about this. I think that maybe, you know, um, because you have a birthright to football scores in real time. And, and certainly the Italians, while they don't have a birthright to that, they could help you out. The Japanese, very technological people, could help you out. So perhaps this is a good reason, not that you need one, to sort of, you know, do a little, because it's been a while. I mean, you guys, it's been like, um, I mean, geez, it's been like 75 years now, hasn't it? 
I mean, come on, guys. Pick it up a little bit. Okay, second and ten at the SF-25. 68 seconds left to go. It looks like... Um, I'm commenting from a live web feed. This is as lame as it gets. I'm not even watching the game. So we've gone from vaguely interesting mathematics to somehow more interesting but less useful uh, football. So the Kansas City Chiefs, by the way, scored... Oh, hello. That wasn't too bad. Uh, 21 points in the fourth quarter. So 57 seconds left to go. These guys might hit another touchdown. They might get it up to 27. But that's not what they need. They need to win the game. Or I hope they're trying to win the game. Um, and not just trying to score seven more points. So 57 seconds left to go. Not looking too good here. I think at this point you could get 100 to 1 odds on San Francisco winning. Maybe better. Um, so let's see. We're going we're to wait out this game. Uh, I don't see that a, uh, a tie game here would be very unlikely. Second and fifteen. Oh, they got they got knocked back a few. Um, second and fifteen at the thirty-six. And this is this is this is they might hit another touchdown. I mean, if someone's betting on whether the final score for San Francisco will be twenty or twenty-seven or twenty-six in theory, I guess, or even twenty-three if they want the field goal, but they won't go for the field goal. Uh, field goal. Um, so let's see how this is doing. Our friends in Germany, very angry, very upset. Clearly, I think they are ready to complain about this in you know the way they know how to complain, which is, uh, well, we'll, we'll wait. We'll let it be a surprise. Um, the Super Bowls actually used to be held in January until 9-11. In 9-11, because of that, in 2002, uh, it was delayed to February, and since then it's been in February. Um, so, you know, it's possible that 9-11 was a conspiracy to move the Super Bowl into February, uh, where it doesn't belong. It's very traditionally a January thing. So I think you know the uh, the 9/11 conspiracy to move the to move the Super Bowl into February. Someone should really look into that. Uh, just tired. Well, it's up to you. You can you know obviously you, well you know it's up to you. Um, but you know if you're tired and they, oh fourth and 25 at the this is it this is it. This is if they lose the ball now, this this is it. Kansas City is going to just sit on it. So they're obviously going to go, but that's 25 yards on a fourth down. I mean, this is this is sink or swim. They're not going to hit a field goal off this. Um, they're going to go for the touchdown or at least for the first down, but but it's pretty much doomed. They're going to have to punt this, I think. Um, and they're obviously going to go for a very really loose punt. They're going to attempt to uh, get an interception or a fumble. But um, if this kind of score, 20 to 31, really not much. Five seconds left in the game, and I think, ladies and gentlemen, the Native Americans from the city that is not in Kansas uh, are about to be declared the winners of this game. Um, so I don't know if they, maybe they already have been declared, because I'm not watching a live stream. I'm watching a web broadcast of a live stream of something. So five seconds left to go. I think we can pretty much call it for the uh, Native Americans from Missouri, which is where they keep Kansas City for some reason. Um, looking bad for the Bay Area. It is about 7.11 p.m. in the Bay Area, 10.11 p.m. on the East Coast, 8.11 p.m. where I am. So it's actually a fairly late game. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised. Tomorrow is a work day. It's not like we get a three-day weekend for the Super Bowl. And, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what the word live means, but I think the game is over. I think, let's go ahead and reload this page, I think the Chiefs have won. Yep, there it is. Final score, Kansas City Chiefs 31, San Francisco 49ers 20. The Kansas City Chiefs have trumped the San Francisco 49ers in something known as a Super Bowl. Um... Okay. Now you can sleep. Now you know who won. I don't know why you care in Germany who won a, a trivial American football game, which isn't even really football as they call it in Europe. All right, you go to sleep. I'm going to get off the stream. It's too early for me to go to sleep, but, um, but I'm going to get off the stream. So there we go. We, we spent most of this uh, stream doing something useless, and then we 
watch the Super Bowl for a while, uh, which is also useless. All right, thank you for watching the stream. Um, I guess congratulations are in order for uh, the people in Missouri who are Native Americans. Um, I don't know how many gold diggers there are in San Francisco, but uh, you lost. So, And maybe you'll get have an earthquake or something in your city, which will be kind of cool, but you never know. All right, bye everyone. Thank you for watching the stream.